In this video, we're going to complete example two. We're going to use the sine rule again to calculate the value of theta in the following triangles, correct to the nearest degree. Now, there is actually a very good reason that we're doing two examples here, and you will see what I mean when we get into question B. You'll also notice that our formula has flipped. Instead of A over sine A, it's sine A over A. And the reason we've done this is because we're trying to find angles this time. So we'll start on question A, and we will label the 60 degree angle with capital A, and we'll label the theta with capital B. We don't really need to label capital C, but we'll do it anyway. Opposite capital B is lowercase b, opposite capital A is lowercase a, and opposite capital C is lowercase c. Once again, we really don't need C because there's no value next to it. So we're going to completely ignore that in our formula. So below our triangle, we'll copy our formula down. Sine capital A over lowercase a equals sine capital B over lowercase b. And we're going to substitute values in here. In case you're not sure which values are which, but capital B is theta, capital A is 60 degrees, lowercase b is 14, and lowercase a is 13. So sine a, which is sine of 60, lowercase a is 13, sine of capital B, capital B is theta, and lowercase b is 14. Now you'll notice that sine of theta is on the right hand side of the equal sign and we usually like to have it on the left hand side. That's not a problem because we can swap sides with the two fractions. We can have sine theta over 14 on the left hand side and move sine 60 over 13 to the right hand side. What do we do now? Well, you'll notice on the left we're going sine theta over 14 which is the same as saying sine theta divide 14. We want to get rid of the 14, so we're going to do the opposite of dividing by 14. We're going to multiply by 14, and we have to do it to both sides of the equal sign. This means that we can cancel out the 14 below, and we have sine theta on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, we have sine 60 over 13, times 14. Okay, so what are we going to do now? I'm going to work out the right hand side. I'll, I'll just bring up my calculator and I'll go sine 60 divide 13 times 14. Now we're faced with a bit of an issue here because we're not at our final solution and we really don't like to round too early on. If we do that, it might throw off our solution just a little bit. Hopefully not too much. Anyway, for now, I'll, I will round it. Let's make it 0 0.933. And I'll show you how we can fix this in a second. So we're going to say that sine theta equals 0 0.933. Now, if we want to find theta, we need to bring sine to the other side, and we need to use inverse sine. So theta equals sine with a negative 1 in brackets 0 0.933. And this is what we need to solve to get our final solution. Now, remember that 0 0.933 has been rounded, which means that our final solution is going to be a little bit wrong. But we didn't clear our calculator. We still have the original number in it. And sometimes, depending on your calculator, what you can do, and I'll, I'll just show you now, I can just go second function sine. I can bring up sine to the negative one. And I'm not going to type the number in. And then press equals. And you'll notice that next to it, it's got ANS, which stands for the answer or the previous answer. So the calculator automatically substituted that number that you had there before. This means that our result, which would round to 69 degrees, is perfectly correct. There's nothing wrong with it. So 69 
write this down as 69 degrees. Now I'll show you another method you can use to avoid rounding early on. We'll start back here where we had sine theta equals sine 60 over 13 times 14. Now rather than working out this part on the right, um, this part here, which is what we did previously, I'm going to straight away bring the sign to the other side. Remembering that if I do that, I've got to use sine to the negative one. And then in brackets, I'll have everything that I had on the right hand side previously. Okay, now if you do this, you can type it all in in one go. We can go second function sine bracket, very important that you use brackets this time, sine 60 divide 13 times 14 close our brackets equals and we get 69 degrees again. So you can choose which method you prefer, it might come down to how your calculator works. Anyway, we now got to move on to question B, so I'm going to give us a new slide to work on. Alright, I'm going to start by labelling my vertices, I'm going to label capital A and capital B. I do this on purpose because for some reason I just like to not use Z here. Anyway, the other vertex is capital C, and then I'll label my lowercase letters which are opposite my capital letters. So we can see we're not using C and I kind of force this to happen because I just like to use A and B for some reason. Anyway, um, we need a lot of working out room so I'm going to start on the left hand side with the formula sine capital A over A equals sine capital B over lowercase b. Now we substitute. Capital A is theta, lowercase a is 53.1 capital B is 48 degrees and lowercase b is 40.1. Now we have sine theta on the left which is good but we need to get rid of the 53.1. Remembering that this is saying sine theta divide 53.1. The opposite of that is to multiply by 53.1 and we're going to do this to both sides and cancel out the 53.1 on the left. Now we get sine theta equals sine 48 over 40.1 times 53.1. I'm actually going to move this into a different location. All right, bringing up our calculator now. Let's work out the right hand side here. Sine 48 divide 40.1 times 53.1 equals and once again we get this long decimal we really don't want to round early on but just for now I'll round it to 0 0.984 so sine oops, not writing at the moment sine theta equals and it's 0 0.984 so we need to bring sine to the other side giving us theta equals sine to the negative one bracket 0 0.984. Now remembering that we kept that number in our calculator. So if I just go second function sine it's going to automatically put the number in here equals and there I get my angle I want it to the nearest degree so it's going to be 80 degrees. Okay, now I mentioned earlier that question B is a bit of a special question. And if you look closely at angle A, there is no way that that is 80 degrees. It's bigger than a right angle. You may remember from a lesson previously where if you had an acute angle, so 80 degrees was our acute angle, it would have a supplementary angle to this one and the angle that is supplementary to 80 is 100. Why is that? Well 100 degrees plus 80 degrees equals 180 degrees. 
and 100 degrees is an obtuse angle, which is what we have up here. This angle A is actually 100 degrees. We learned in a previous video that sine of 80 will give you the same result as sine of 100. So we have to choose between either 80 degrees or 100 degrees. And by looking at the angle, we can see that it's got to be a 100 degree angle. Anyway, that concludes example two. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.